Today I'm going to show you a simple method built off of the previous video I made in regards to how to build a surface that's symmetrical about a center line. I'm going to create the surface of the windshield or the windscreen and, and this is an STL. I'm going to base that surface off of this STL. So there's a few steps that I like to take to prepare my workspace. Now this STL is big and if you don't have a very fast computer it could actually slow your computer down and what I want to make sure of is I'm working in an, a localized area. So the first thing I do is I go into my reverse engineering tools and I go into SNP. I'm going to orient my view to top and I'm going to zoom in on the area that I'm going to work in on. With SNP selected I'm going to pick my facet body and then draw my boundary. And for this, I'm just going to simply select some points from point to point, come down a bit, over. There we go. Hit the middle mouse button to accept that. Now, next, I'm going to define a region. I want to pick inside of that and I'm going to say edit a copy with SNP. Select OK and what happens is in that view, that top view, it takes that region, projects it down onto the STL and splits it. You can see I still have the entire STL so I'm just going to hide that and here I'm left with just that portion that I want to work with. Now you can see that portion is a little rough in some areas so because of that I'm going to have to deviate off of this original STL. I don't want to model in all of those little errors, all those problems that exist on that surface. Now, I'm going to change the color as well as my translucency. There we go. Now that I've done that, I'm going to go into Curve and I'm going to section this. Section that with my ZX plane. I'm going to clean up the curve. I'm going to auto fit, join curves, make it general. Otherwise, I'm going to get a bunch of tiny little curves that, because remember, these are tiny triangles. This is an STL. So each little triangle is going to get a section cut. And what I want to do is I just want to join that one with, uh, or all those curves into one big curve. Select OK. I'm going to take this curve. I'm going to control C to copy and control V to paste. So there I've got my curves. Now remember everything that I've done to this point is uh, there's no associativity to anything. So these curves, the section curve, you cannot have an associative section to an STL. At least not yet anyway. Now I'm going to go into X form and this is where a curve like this could potentially cause problems. You can see how complex that curve is. It's a single degree, because again, we're going through single or planar facets, but I have 211 segments. So with that, I'm going to try to up my degree, and I'm going to reduce my segment count. Sometimes you may get a, an error. You have to go back into the XForm tool. Uh, let's do that. There we go. Bring that down. So here I've got a single segment curve now that is basically third three degrees. I'm going to simplify this even more and select OK. Now let me go in and pick my new cleaned up curve. I'm going to foreshorten the view, basically gun sight it. And you can see the difference. You can see this curve is the old original one and it's nice and wavy. So I'm going to pick this curve and I'm just going to change the color of that. Uh, we'll go to magenta. Okay, now, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into analysis and under my analysis I'm going to use deviation gauge. So I want to analyze my curve to my curve. Um, I'm going to use needles, say needle scale, torque that up. Um, I can use suggest scale factor if I want to. How many samples do I want across the length of that curve? Um, minimum checking distance is set to one. I'm going to up this to two. 
and we can see in this area over here I am 1.2 millimeters off. Not a big deal. Now that I have that I'm just going to simply select OK. There's my deviation gauge. Now next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into my uh, surface. I'm going to go into X form and I'm going to pick this curve. Okay, so the curve that I want to modify is the one that I just cleaned up and created. You can see it's two degree. And with this, I'm going to add in another segment. How I want this to move, I'm going to specify my plane. My plane is going to be my ZX plane. And we'll go into, I'll just say at distance, pick that plane, leave it at zero. And then here, I can begin modifying this curve to get it much closer to what I want. Let me gun sight this. And then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to micro position and start micro positioning this. So by doing this, you can see I can get something really clean fairly quickly. There we are up a little bit and then just like that I'm less than four tenths of a mil out if I really want to I can go in there and clean this up a little bit more get it a little bit cleaner but for the sake of this video speed things up a little bit I think I'm close enough now next thing I like to do at this point is I'm going to go into the home tab and then I'm going to extrude my curve the nice clean curve that I have created. And I'm going to go this way, and I'm going to go this way, and I'm going to say symmetric value. There we are. Bring this up. Now that I have my extrude in place, let me go ahead and change the color of this. nice lovely blue. I'm going to take this extrusion and I'm going to start morphing it to match this half of the glass surface. Now again I want to make sure that things that I do keep my surface symmetrical about that center line. So I'm going to go back into my analysis. I'm going to go into deviation gauge. I want this surface to this. Now I'm going to leave my minimum checking distance at 2. You may want to shrink that if you want. And then um, I want my sample, basically how many of these do I want. I'm going to turn this down a little bit. And let's see here. I'm going to turn off needles. And um, you can do markers if you want, but to me it sort of blocks up the screen a bit. So I'll just I'll just leave the maximum distance displayed, and I'll turn this up to let's say 10 for now. Select OK, and actually let me change the translucency on this as well, so we can see everything a little bit better. Now that I have that in place, I'm going to go into Surface X Form, pick that, increase my control points a bit. And with that now, I can come in and start manipulating, let's just say normal, pick this, hold my control key down, pick this, and drag. Get this into an area, which is good. And then pick this, pick this, and then come back up. So this is where... It's a delicate balance. You want to start making sure that the control points that you select, okay, maybe I want to take these, just these two, and morph those down a bit. So you want to keep your control points balanced across that center line. Now, 
Next thing I want to do is, you can see, I'm, I'm uh, about 10 mils off over here. I look at that edge, I'm going to have to curl this down a little bit more. But before I do that, one of the things I am going to do is I'm going to go all the way over to scale. I want to make sure my object center is um, set. I'm going to pick this curve, control key down, this curve, and then the direction that I want to move this in. So my vector, I'll use Y. I'll grab these again and pull these out a little bit. So now I've got something very close up here and you can see it's less than 0.4 and then over here I need to get this a little bit closer on that corner. So I'm going to go back into move and once again I'm going to pick these two points and pull that point down a bit. Pick this one, pick this one, Get in there, get in there. And pick this row, pick this row, bring this up. So at this point, it's going to be a delicate balance of picking, making sure you're getting your control points. You go like this, and then going back and forth to get these surfaces to match. There we are. So you can see I still have to curl this in even more. And then maybe it's one of those things where I have to take this edge and this edge, go back into scale, and then, oops, go and then drag these in pick this pick this Very good. Go back into move. Now, let's see, break this down a little bit. Bring those two points. Up a little bit and this is where a little bit of patience is going to get you where you want to go now is this a little bit slower than some other methods yeah maybe it is but what you're going to end up with is a surface that's nearly perfect or actually is perfect across the center plane you don't have to symmetry it uh, you don't have to do anything to it other than Analyze it to make sure it gives you the shape that you want. There we are. Pick this up. And go back and forth. And this is this is what I'm talking about within the control point modification. So let me come in here, let me scale. Pick this, pick this. There we are. I want to go in the Z.
Okay, so you would just keep going until you get this to the tolerance that you want. Now notice, I mean, I'm still, I'm still kind of far away, but again, for the sake of speeding up my uh, video, my lecture, I'm not going to make this absolutely perfect. I'm just going to show you some of the techniques. You go back and forth. Again, you have history here, which is very nice. So at this point, I'm going to go in to my analysis, and I want to do a section analysis on this. Uh, I just want five. Let me grab my. There we are. Actually, let me reduce that a bit and increase the spacing. Drag that back. And for this, show comb, suggest scale factor. Turn that up a bit. Select OK. So as you can see, you know, I'm uh, over here, I'm less than 10 mils out still. I've still got a little bit of work to go, maybe another 15, 20 minutes, pulling some control points, going back and forth, sweetening it up a little bit is going to give me the result that I want. But I have a perfect surface now that's balanced across that uh, center line of the vehicle. Now, the next portion of this is once you have this sweetened up and cleaned up, you'll notice that it doesn't fully encompass the entire uh, windscreen. So what you could do if you want to, you can come into the original curve that you created. Uh, let me go into my analysis. Uh, let me go into my deviation. Go ahead and hide that. So off of this original curve, if it's something that you, uh, you want to modify there, you can. Go ahead and hide that. If I go and click on this curve, you can come in here and move along the polygon and then grab that polygon and start dragging that curve out. And do the same thing over on this end. And you'll notice that as I do that, my surface grows because of the initial curve making that extrusion. So I can go back there and make modifications that way. Let's do this. Bring this out a little bit more. There we go. And again, I just need to go in here and um, again use my X form. Maybe in this case, it's um, pick these two corners, say move, deselect, pick those two corners, and then uh, let's do uh, vector. Let's go to the Z. Start pulling those up and again tweaking, getting it close, getting it to within whatever tolerance. Judging by the amount of uh, problems the scan has, you're probably looking at within about a mil. So again, like I said, it's probably taking another 15, 20 minutes, maybe a half hour of getting this to that scan data. But the results are, as you can see, a not only a parametric, but a very clean surface transition going across centerline for that windscreen.